Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Welcome. This is a rather brief service uh, with readings, a briefer sermon. It's just a message. And then we have an opportunity to share our own thoughts about thanks, things that we're grateful for at, uh, after all of that. And so I'm going to begin with, by opening the word. We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, who is and who was and who is to come, because thou hast taken thy great power and hast reigned. Now let us bow our heads in prayer. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Glory and might be unto him forever and ever. Amen. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. We'll just say a recitation that you are probably familiar with. I'll say how it goes and then I'll say it in case you want to recite it with me. And here is it in its entirety. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and in his truth endures to all generations. From Psalm 100, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. <clears throat> Reading from the word of the Lord. Various selections from the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Third Testament. From Psalm 3, the Psalm of David, you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. From Psalm 95, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. <clears throat> and right before entering into his gates with thanksgiving is are these three verses. It's called a Psalm of Thanksgiving, Psalm 100. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving. From Luke, and this is just with the concept of the Lord always comes after us. It's all about our, th our gratitude to the Lord, our being thankful to the Lord. It's because he looks after us. It, it, he is the God of our salvation. Luke 15, then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. 
And the Pharisees and scribes complain, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, what man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. <clears throat> This is from Arcana Celestia 5957. It's about, it, it's about the, the idea that the divine itself, the God of all the universe, the Lord in his divine divinity, in its essence, doesn't need thanks. I mean, it, that's for us. This is what it says. In the divine, Anything of the love of self is utterly inconceivable. Inconceivable that thanksgivings should be done for his own sake. But they are done for the sake of the person himself. For when a person is in thanksgiving, they can receive good from the Lord. Because they then have been separated from the love of self and its evil, which are the obstacles. And therefore, the Lord wills a state of thanksgiving in every person for their own sake. Because when a person is in this state, the Lord can flow in with heavenly good. When we're in the state of thanksgiving, the Lord can flow in with heavenly good. And that is a beautiful thing to think about. <clears throat> and so I want to just talk about that you know it's thanksgiving and we have our own approach to the holiday in our country associated with giving thanks and it's tied closely to a feast of thanks celebrated in new england well over 300 years ago we also have layers and layers of cultural traditions such as turkeys family dinner gatherings autumn leaves and the cornucopia or the horn of plenty you see the plenty that, that we have you know that represent at times like you know thanksgiving we, we look at the plentiness and the harvest it's interesting no we don't all you know different parts of this country sometimes it's not a turkey that's featured or you know and there's or even the same types of things at the table such so as kind of pie and it's it's very interesting how even regionally, it's a little bit different. And yet, it's such a tradition. And I love Thanksgiving in that here we have this, the whole country celebrating this thing called Thanksgiving Day. And this is, it has nothing to do with what denomination you might be, what church you might belong to. It's Thanksgiving Day. There's a parade. It's, I just love how. It, it's so ecumenical, brings so many people together. And we each have our own reason for giving thanks. And those who are looking to the Lord, we look to the Lord our own way, and we thank the Lord our own way. In ancient Israel, there was a harvest festival called the Feast of Ingathering, a very, very old celebration of the gathering in of crops. And it required a pilgrimage to the sanctuary of God to make an offering. This is even when they were in the wilderness and they were camped out and for 40 years and, you know, as they approached the land of Canaan. Over time, once fully settled in Palestine, the feast took on elements of the wilderness wanderings of the Exodus when their ancestors lived in tents. And so it became, became called the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Tents or the Feast of Booths. A Sukkot, S U K K O T, booth, booths. 
in a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the Israelites would construct huts or booths and live in them for seven days. That's in Leviticus 23. That's ancient. That is very long ago that they would do this. And so today it's a Jewish custom to celebrate the Sukkot as a remembrance of the Exodus from Egypt and as a Thanksgiving festival. There is a tradition of constructing small tents, booths, the sukkah, in the home, on the deck or in the backyard, and eat in there, eat their main meal in them during a seven day celebration, not necessarily live in them as in ancient times. But it still remains to this day. Prayers, blessings, rituals, and good food enhance the festivities, focusing on gratitude for God, for deliverance, protection, and bounty. So I want to read about these. There were three feasts. This was the third feast. There were three feasts in ancient Israel, and they have very significant meaning, these three feasts, to our spiritual lives concept of three feasts. I'm saying this because we have a feast today. Whatever we may be doing with ourselves, our family, probably not as many as usual, but uh, but whatever we do today to celebrate the Lord with food and our gratitude, think about that representing three feasts spiritually. So this is from our canon 9294. The bringing out of the children of Israel from Egypt, represented by the first feast called the Passover, the bringing out from Egypt, represented by the first feast called the Passover, meant deliverance from falsity. By their being brought into the land of Canaan, the planting of truth in good was represented, being the second feast, which was called the feast of the harvest of the first fruits. For well, the land of Canaan is the church in respect to good, and so the church is good, and the children of Israel mean spiritual truths, truths implanted in good. The children of Israel coming into the land of Canaan. Continuing to read, by their dwelling in the land of Canaan is meant the implantation of good and so life in heaven. And this was represented by the third feast which was called the Feast of Ingathering, also the Feast of Tabernacles or Tents. From all this, it is now evident why three feasts were established, namely for the reason that the human race, which wishes to receive new life from the Lord, is brought out of hell and into heaven, which is accomplished by the Lord through his coming into the world. Wow, which is connected it to Christmas. That's Arcana. 9294. And so just think about these feasts, our Thanksgiving feast representing the three feasts. The, the first one being the Passover, being taken away from falsity and delivered from them, from falsities and evils, deliverance. The second feast being brought into good. That's the entering the land of Canaan, the feast of first fruits. Because they established the land in the land, they could now have the first fruits of their dwelling. And then the third feast, the dwelling itself in Canaan, is the implantation of good in life, the life of heaven, living the life of good. So being brought away from falsity and evil, being implanted into goodness, and then living the life of good. That's what the three feasts mean. So when we study the story of the exodus from Egypt and the entry into the land of Canaan, we can apply what we learn to our own spiritual journey. This Thanksgiving season, one thing we can think about is how the Lord protects us when we are moving through spiritual trials and struggles. Even when times are rough, the Lord is delivering us. The Lord is taking, drawing us away from evil and falsity. The Lord is implanting goodness in, in, into our lives by the implantation of truth into good. He's doing that in our minds. And 
we dwell in that land of goodness. He is our shelter, our deliverer, and our provider. I will dwell in your tent forever. I will put my trust in the shelter of your wings. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, for he will shelter me in his tabernacle on the day of evil. He will hide me in the secret place of his tent. Psalm 27. Amen. And now to the one only God, Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, the almighty and everlasting God. Amen. <laughs>